Right, so super-resolution radio fluctuations. It's a new analytical method we've recently developed in the lab. Um, ends up being an ImageAid plugin. And so what it does is it allows you to analyze wide fields or confocal or turf data um, and extract super-resolution data from there. Uh, one, we need to slightly tweak the way one acquires data. Uh, you need a small temporal series for this to work. But effectively what the algorithm tries to do is it tries to map up, out the position of individual full force. And from there extract their position, which then allows you to get a super resolution image at the end of the day. It's an easy to use plugin, it's available online. The, the cool thing about this approach is that it can be applied to almost any microscopy methods. So what it does is most of the microscopes you already have available can become super resolution microscopes just by using this post analysis or post acquisition process where you run the data you acquired through the algorithm. If the algorithm can extract super resolution data, it will be presented to you. Otherwise, what you get is very similar to a deconvolved image at the end of the day. Right. I, I especially like the application of super resolution into studying pathogens, especially viruses. Most of the viruses are uh, extremely small in scale. You have vaccine being, for example, 400 nanometers, HIV being about 100 nanometers. And the resolution of conventional microscopes is around 300. So what this means is that you cannot accurately look at pathogens. You cannot know very well what's their architecture, what's their morphogenesis, for example. And that's exactly where super resolution becomes interesting, especially because you can do start doing live cells, so you actually can see how these viruses assemble or disassemble.